Welcome once again to Mind of Steel. This is the show where I, Reynard Wilson, delve as deeply as any man dares into the world, the wonders, the deeds, and the thoughts of one man. His name is Mark Steele, and he's often referred to as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. But if there was a prize for Britain's second most ludicrous conspiracy theorist, it would probably go to the subject of this video. Her name is Kate Shemarani, and she and Mark are very close friends. You might even call them collaborators, because they've worked together on some of the most preposterous conspiracy grifts that Britain has ever known. So let's catch up with Kate and Mark as they wander around the streets of London up to no good. So here we are in London and we're measuring electromagnetic radiation and the, gov uh, the council has said it should be no bigger than 200. It's Council of European 15 resolution. It should be no more than 200 millivolts. From what we've got there, we've got 3,000 there now. 3,600, but there's a couple of masks up on the top there. So, that's so you can gonna... see that's way over what it should be and everyone's getting absolutely bathed in it. Which is... Watching Mark and Kate banter together, it's like a competition of who can become the most visibly confused about subjects they know the least about. And it's very hard to declare a winner because they are both so spectacularly ignorant about these topics that they profess to be experts. Remember, Mark isn't a really a weapons expert. His highest qualification was, well, he got an undergraduate degree in psychology while serving a prison sentence uh, from the Open University. Kate Shemarani is a former cosmetic nurse. She's never had any deep biomedical training. She was the woman who maybe injected Botox, perhaps nothing more complicated than that. But they're both pretending to be experts about radiation and human health. They aren't. Up there, that 5G mast up there emits what's called a corona. It's an electrical discharge, so it's a collimated signal in air. And obviously we're measuring 3,000 down here, 2,000, 800 there, 2,000, 800, 2,000, 4,000. So it popped there at 4,000. So you can see that some type of beam forming characteristics from the antenna. Mark seems to be confused about the difference between a collimated signal and a corona discharge. In electronics, these refer to entirely different phenomena. And, and they're not that easily muddled if you've had the slightest bit of education, which of course Mark hasn't. And Kate isn't listening all that carefully because she's in London for a mission. And believe it or not, Mark is there to help her. Yep, Ofcom, when I tried to put this in the press on local radio, Ofcom, even though I, I gave all the evidence in of where I got all of the scientific evidence-based studies, Ofcom then shut me down, the radio kicked me off, and they fined the radio, they then put me in the Guardian newspaper for trying to bring this to the public's attention, didn't name me. So I can't tell if Kate is more annoyed about having her radio show cancelled and then being struck off the nursing register for promoting quack fake cancer remedies or the fact that the Guardian newspaper didn't mention her by name. I suspect it's actually the latter because she's the kind of narcissist who just has to be the centre of attention and will say all kinds of crazy things to get that attention that she so profoundly craves. Amy. So today I'm in London seeing a barrister and I'm going to be taking hopefully Ofcom to court for stopping information that is potentially going to harm and kill the public from getting into the public domain. Catch you later guys on more updates. I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to reveal that Kate Shemarani's legal action against Ofcom, and that's the government agency that regulates communications in the UK, unfortunately, it was not successful. Uh, they are free to regulate people who publicly broadcast quack cancer advice in, and pretend to be medically qualified people, as Kate Shemarani once did. And in addition, she has also been struck off the nursing and midwifery register, which means she is no longer entitled to call herself a registered nurse, because she isn't. Now, even though our British airwaves are free and devoid of Kate Shemarani, it doesn't mean the internet is so lucky. There's plenty of Kate Shemarani to go around. In fact, 
You can find her right now on Rumble, the mostly unregulated alternative to YouTube. Here's an interview that I found on that wonderful website for the Children's Health Defense Organization. That's the organization that promotes all kinds of anti-vax quackery run by presidential candidate RFK Jr. So let's have a listen to what Kate has to say. We saw them outside laying this 5G technology. If it was such a deadly pandemic, why was that of the utmost importance? Why did they lay it overground when they could have laid the fiber optics underground? Where it wouldn't... Kate is confused about so many things. Is she confused about the difference between overground and underground? Or, or is it the fact that she's wondering why British companies are continuing to install essential internet infrastructure while the lockdown happens? It was because we all needed the internet. She's so confused. Uh, and yet, that doesn't seem to be a barrier to children's health defence putting her on a stage in their major conference. Uh, it, it's baffling, isn't it? Now, your Wi-Fi 2.45 gigahertz to 5.8 gigahertz will open the blood-brain barrier. And that allows all of these toxins to sail right on up to your child's brain and your brain. Kate likes to present her advice as one mum to another. We're just doing it for the children. That's a very common trope of conspiracy truthers. They'd like to claim that all of this is for the next generation and not at all for their own self-publicity, their own vain glory. Which, of course, that's what it is. Because if Kate was honest about her own relationship with her kids, she'd reveal what an awful dysfunctional family it was. Sebastian, her son, described how he was constantly made to feel dread about the things that his mother told him, such as that he would be obliterated by space lasers fired by the Rothschilds. Crazy stuff like that. That's what Kate's motherhood was like. And now she's trying to advise us? That they're going to come along with 16 to 18 gigahertz, which will break open these lipid, lipid nanoparcels, and that they have put particular dormant viruses in them. People are probably saying, oh, this is not true what she's talking about. This is, this is not true. Yes, it is. Well, there we have it. Kate Shemarani says that her outrageous claims are true. Therefore, they must be. Who are we to doubt the notion that uh, these lipid parcels, and I think by that she's referring to the mRNA vaccine, Kate Shemarani, as does Mark Steele, they both believe that the vaccine is, is actually some kind of super secret device to be activated by radiation at a later time, which will then crack open and, and yield some kind of deadly payload with a nefarious purpose for some reason not known to anybody except Mark Steele, Kate Chemerani, RFK Jr. and the anti-vax conspiracy truth, the movement. It's a perfect conspiracy, isn't it? Professor Mosculu, Dr. Barry Trower have all talked. There are so many studies showing that viruses, fungus, mold, and bacteria will proliferate when it's hit with 60 gigahertz and up, or even lower than that if it's chronically pulsed. It's a kind of kook circle jerk where one conspiracy truther cites another, and they all end up relying on each other as a sources to back up their crazy theories. In this case, Kate Chemerani is citing Dr. Barry Trower. Well, for starters, Dr. Barry Trower is not a doctor. He does not have a PhD. He is not a medically qualified person. He's a former school teacher who worked for a while in the prison service. So at least that's one step better qualified than Mark Steele, who was a prisoner. Trower is a fantasist. He's another one of these people who may be feeling dissatisfied with the life that fate dealt him, has invented a new sort of life for himself. He decided one day that he, like Mark Steele, was a weapons expert and started publishing videos and statements ab about how he believed that radio frequency systems were actually a deadly weapon. And people like Kate and Mark started to believe him. And they all began to embellish 
Barry Trower's fantastical theories to make fantastical theories of their own. We're watching some kind of religion being born, and Kate Gemarani is one of its priests. There's going to be no one able to fertilize an egg. No man will be able to fertilize an egg. And we know that glyphosate will stop the plant taking up zinc. And men, you need zinc in your testes and your prostate. You should be eating a zinc-rich diet. This bit is for my bros, the men in the audience. I'm sure you don't want your testes to shrivel up. So according to Kate Shamarani, you need to eat a high zinc diet. Uh, fortunately for you, just about every food except refined sugar and flour, basically anything that contains protein, also contains zinc. So it's pretty much impossible to have a low zinc diet. Um, I don't know why Kate is even slightly worried about it, but thanks to her, I know that our human species will not go extinct. It's all thanks to you, Kate, for being so concerned about my balls. I am definitely anti all vaccines, aluminium, mercury, viruses, funguses, mold, bacteria, aborted fetal cell lines. They have no place in the human body, none whatsoever. After such a rich and full feast of conspiracism, is anybody actually surprised that Kate Cemarani is in fact an anti-vaxxer? In fact, uh, I would be surprised at this point if she wasn't a flat earther as well. She has so many contrarian views. She's confused about so many facts of basic science. Uh, of course she, of course she's an anti-vaxxer. How could she not be? Thank you, I'm Kate Shamarani, natural nurse in a toxic world for children's health defense. Kate Shamarani, the toxic nurse in the natural world. Wasn't it a wild ride getting to know her? and some of her zany theories. We know that she loves to pal around with our guy, Mark Steele. Why? It's because they're two peas in a pod. They're kindred spirits. They believe the same sorts of wacky things. And it's like one of those folly à deux, that bizarre phenomena where one person makes another person insane except for the fact that they were both insane to begin with. So they just pile their insanities on each other, and they come out with some even zanier things that any one of them could have come out with alone. That's why we love to watch Mark and Kate together. They, they riff off each other in such a painfully beautiful way that I just can't look away. It, it's, it's like watching a train crash unfold before my very eyes. And what of the legal action that Kate was in London to pursue? Well, I don't think it's gone anywhere. I suspect that the barristers took one look at her companion, Mark Steele, and realized, just like every legal professional eventually does, that the man is insane. And therefore, you would be very wise not to touch him with the metaphorical or even literal 10-foot barge pole. No amount of distance is too great when you face the possibility of sharing a courtroom and possibly the same side of a court case with Mark Steele and Kate Cemarani. Oh, it's been an absolute wild ride, hasn't it? And I can't wait to share with you the next instalment of Mind of Steel, because it's sure to be some completely bonkers lunacy from the world of 5G or alt-med conspiracy truthers. It's going to be a blast.